Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Paul Crowther, and I'd like to give you a warm welcome to our video series, The Wirral and the Bible. In this series, we'll be taking a look at some things associated with the Wirral that have either an explicit link to the Bible, or that we're going to use as an illustration for something that the Bible teaches. These videos are being filmed during the coronavirus outbreak in 2020. That means that sometimes we'll be able to film on location, and at other times we'll have to make do with photos due to the restrictions currently in place. Today we've come to an ancient place of Christian worship, Birkenhead Priory. It stands on the side of the River Mersey. It's the oldest building on Merseyside. Now, we can't take a look around today due to the coronavirus restrictions, but you can take an excellent virtual tour on the Priory website. Uh, details of that are in the description of this video. Uh, the site itself is made up of different buildings. There's uh, the Chapter House, that's a Church of England chapel. There's the Scriptorium, which is a place where manuscripts were copied before the inventing of the printing press. There's the Undercroft, and above that there's the Refectory. And then there's the tower and spire of uh, St Mary's uh, Parish Church. Uh, the rest of the church having been demolished in the 1970s, but you can still climb the 101 stairs up the tower and look over the River Mersey. Now, because the Priory's been here such a long time, it has an interesting history. It's uh, built back in 1150, that's 870 years ago. In 1275 and 1277, Edward I uh, comes here for a royal visit. He stays at the Priory with his household. On his second visit, uh, he, uh, he entertains a massive royal party here. The King of Scotland comes down to settle a border dispute and uh, it costs around £40,000 for a six-day visit in today's money. Uh, most of the expenses would have been paid by the Crown, but almost certainly the Priory itself would have been out of po pocket after a couple of royal vis visits over uh, those two years. In the 14th century, we've got the Scriptorium built. Then in the 16th century, in the Reformation in 1536, uh, all the monasteries uh, are dissolved by Henry VIII during the Reformation, so this stops being a monastery at that point. Uh, during the English Civil War in 1644, this place is occupied by the Royalists. It's fortified, uh, but they lose it eventually to the Roundheads. Uh, in the 19th century, at the end of it, there's an appeal launch to save the Priory from ruin. In uh, the Second World War, an incendiary bomb goes off in the scriptorium and damages it. Well, this is just a, a, a potted bit of the history, but we're going to focus on the chapter house today, because the chapter house was the heart of everyday business at the Priory. All the practical considerations about the life of the monastery and the estates would have been sorted out there. Uh, there would have been a stone seat running round the perimeter of the building for everyone to be seated during the business of the day. And it's the oldest part of the Priory. Uh, like the rest of the Priory, it's been altered over time and the stained glass windows were installed in it in the 20th century. And it's one of those more recent windows that we're going to take a look at now to see what it teaches us about the Bible. Uh, now, it's like a typical stained glass window. It depicts its people in a kind of glorified way. But there's a really interesting feature on the main window. And it's this. If you see here, you can see uh, Mary holding the baby Jesus, depicted here in stained glass. And you can see Jesus and Mary are looking at each other, uh, depicting the birth of Jesus there. If you go up to the top of the window, you get a picture of Jesus on the cross. And he's pictured at the moment of his death. And if you see, he bows his head to death. And as he bows his head, if you follow the gaze of his eyes on the cross, if you follow it down, you see that the Lord Jesus on the cross is looking directly down at the baby Jesus depicted at his birth. The idea being displayed here in stained glass is that Jesus, even at his birth, was heading towards his death. And the Bible teaches us that. The Bible teaches us that he was born to die. There's a prophecy of God's coming saviour in the Old Testament in a book called Isaiah, and it describes Jesus this way. It says, he grew up like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering familiar with pain, like one whom people hide their face from. 
he was despised, he was held in low esteem. Surely he took on our pain, surely he bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, that's our wrongdoing. He was crushed for our iniquities, that's our sin, the things we've done wrong. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the Lord Jesus on the cross, the punishment of us all. At Christmas, we remember the baby Jesus being born, but he always had the shadow of the cross hanging over him. He was always heading there to pay for our wrongdoing. Well, there's Birkenhead Priory. It's worth a visit. Enjoy looking round the ancient buildings. And while you're there, look up at that window and remember Jesus, born to be the sacrifice for our wrongdoing so that we could be graciously forgiven by our loving Heavenly Father. That's the end of today's edition of The Wirral and the Bible. I hope you have a good week, and if you've enjoyed the video today, look out for the next edition in this series next week.